Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to be talking about public and private methods. And through this example of athletes and teams, hopefully I will help you get a better sense of how public methods should be used for things that are of relevance to the rest of the program. And private methods will be for things that are somewhat implementation details and are really only of concern to the class to which they belong. So if that's not immediately clear to you, hopefully this example will fix that. And if that is immediately clear, feel free to watch the video or just move right along because it sounds like you already have this figured out. So to set up what we're doing here, I have these two classes, which I mentioned, one's athlete and one's team. And each athlete needs to be able to be instantiated. So we'll instantiate four athletes and two teams. So team one and team two each come with their own color. And then the teams are able to recruit the players so that we know who belongs to what team. And then the teams need to be able to play. What we'll do to make sure that all the state was properly set as we expect is by just basically console logging the state of team one and the state of team two so we can make sure that, spoiler alert, the players are dressed in the appropriate team colors. That's the goal, okay? So, first of all, we can tell that we need to be able to instantiate athletes and teams, which means that we need to create an initialize method. So we'll create an initialize method for athletes and an initialize method for teams. Now, the athletes don't take any initial values, whereas the teams do. So the teams need to take a team color. So we'll create an instance variable called color, spelled like a Canadian, which I am, and assign it to the color that was passed in. In this way, we can pass around this color instance variable, and we always know what the team color is for that instance of the team class. Hopefully that makes sense. Next up, we need to be able to recruit athletes for each team, which means that the recruit method needs to exist on the team class. So let's create that method. And recruit is going to take an athlete and we will recruit an athlete by just pushing it onto the list of current team members that we have. So we'll create a list of members, which we'll do in a second. And we'll just add the athlete to that list unless members includes oops, the athlete. So meaning if the athlete has already been recruited, don't recruit that athlete again. That's a waste of time and we don't want to have duplicates of athletes. So we'll just make sure that that athlete is only ever recruited by the same team one time. And now we need to create our list of members. So we'll do that when we initialize the team because the team will be initialized with no members. And the last thing we have to do is ask the teams to play. So we'll create a play method. And the way that each team is going to prepare to play is by asking each member to play for that team. So we will take the list of members and for each member in that list, we can simply ask that member to play a game for that instance of the team class. So this will either be self will either be team one or team two, depending on which instance of the team class uh, we're talking about. So now we have all of the public methods provided for team so that everything down here will work as expected uh, publicly, but this method, this play game for does not exist on the athlete class, which means that we need to create it. So let's go up there and do that. We will first start by defining it, play game four, and it's going to accept a team. Oops. And there's going to be some steps involved in preparing for a game. So there's two steps, getting dressed and warming up. Now the reason we want these methods to be encapsulated in this play game for method is that 
other parts of the program or other people in the world in this sort of real life metaphor don't have a say in how an athlete gets dressed or warms up. I mean, they're, in real life their coach might, but the athlete can take care of that. It's not the team's responsibility to tell the athlete which sock to put on first or anything like that. The athlete is going to take care of it on their own. So we are going to create private methods for each step. So we'll create a private method for getting dressed. So we'll have get dressed and it will take a color. That way the athlete knows which color of socks to put on, which is how we're going to uh, signal which team they're on along with a shirt and a headband. So let's say if we're going to get dressed, we will start by putting on socks, the color. We'll also put on a shirt and we'll put on a headband. And those will all be the appropriate color, which means that we need to create methods for put on socks, just take a color. And in this method, we are going to change the value of the instance of those socks, sock colors. So we'll have sock color equals color. And then we'll just do the exact same thing for shirts and for headbands. Oops. All right, so we have this private get dress method. It individually calls each thing that the or each method for setting the correct state for the socks, the shirt, and the headbands. But we did not initialize these anywhere, so this is where those would be created. Obviously, we don't want our athletes running around with no clothes on, so we should initialize them with some initial values. So for a sock color, we can do something like default color. And each athlete will all have the exact same default color. It's just going to be white. And so we'll create a constant up here, default color, and assign it to the value of, oh man, one day we will, of white. And so now this public play game for method can simply call get dressed with the correct team. And we only want to pass it what it needs, which will be the team color. However, we don't have yet an accessor or a getter for team.color. So let's create that. If we go down here, we can create an attribute accessor. Uh, we'll just do a reader because we don't need a setter. So we'll just do, uh, just create a getter for color. And I'm not sure if I call dot members anywhere, but since that's also a uh, instance variable on this class, I will create that for now anyway. And we can always remove it if we don't use it. So now we have this value available, which means that whatever team gets passed in, we can pass the color to get dressed, and get dressed will pass that color into each uh, method to set the correct sock, shirt, and headband color. This is, again, <laughs> a little bit exaggerated, right? These, the, we probably don't need to create all these individual methods. We could just set the sock, shirt, and headband color in get dressed. But this is to show you how this might work. In other words, if there was more involved in putting on socks than just setting the sock color, perhaps this would be separate. In a real example, what we would probably just do is something like getting dressed would mean set the sock color, set the shirt color, oops, and set the headband color. And we could just do something like this. Right? This is how I'll, I'll actually leave it. But this is to show you if there were multiple steps involved, that's how you could do it. You create more and more of these private methods as the implementation details get smaller and smaller and smaller and 
more and more specific to this class. Again, the example being the team doesn't care how the athlete puts on their socks. Okay, so I'll clean this up just so we don't have all that extra clutter. And now the athlete knows how to get dressed. The one other thing that they will want to do before the game is warm up. And again, we don't need the team to tell them how to warm up. They are going to be able to take care of that themselves. They are a professional athlete. So they are going to have this very simple warm up private method. And all it's going to do is just log that uh, this athlete's warming up. Oops, self is warming up. Okay, this will just signal to us when we print this out that the athlete did warm up before the game started. And I believe that should be everything we need. We can initialize an athlete with a default sock, shirt, and headband color. Someone else, in this case a team, can ask that athlete to play a game for a specific team. And the athlete can take care of warming up and getting dressed. The team, on the other hand, can be asked to recruit athletes and can be asked to play a game. But whoever calls the play method doesn't know anything about the members that, that team has. It just says, play the game, whatever, member, whatever team members you have, make sure they're ready. And that's the whole point of public and private methods. Okay, so let's make sure that this is actually working. Uh, it may not be. All right, looks like it's good. So we can see here that all four athletes warm up before the game. Then we have this game uh, log just to show you that we are logging the state of each team before the game start or when the game would be played. And we have this green team. And the green team has two athletes, athlete one and athlete two. And they're each dressed in all green. Team two has, is a blue team, and they, are, they have two athletes that are dressed in all blue. So that's working appropriately, but that's not the main purpose of this video. You can totally play around with this code on your own if you want to make it far more interesting. The point of this video is primarily on what we've written into this athlete class. The fact that we have extracted away the implementation details of how to prepare for a game into these two private methods that only the athlete cares about. And, oops, and the athlete will take care of those concerns. All they need to be told is when to take care of those concerns. So this is how you would implement pretty much any spe class specific implementation detail. Is you put them in a private method and then you only expose the things that the rest of the program needs to know about. Now just because I'm curious, let me remove this getter for members and see if everything blows up. Nope, it looks fine. So I will push up the code to a gist with this exact uh, state and you can toy around with it if you want. Let me know what you thought of this video. This is, I think, the first video that I've actually made in Ruby, despite that being most of the, time, most of the code that I write when I'm at work. So if you like this video, let me know. If you didn't like this video, you don't like Ruby, you don't like me, whatever it may be, comment down below, let me know. Uh, any suggestions for future videos, I'm open to them, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So thanks for watching, and have a good one, everybody.